Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me. You've, you've done prison time, right? Just due due to the yeah, conversation just, we had offline. Yeah, I just I just did, I just got done doing ten years. I got locked up in 08. I, I had that fought with my second pistol case, so I was in the county fighting that. Then I got into a fight with somebody in there and fucked him up real bad. And they put the shit all on the news and in the newspaper on some bullshit. And they gave me 161 months for that shit. I got out in 17. And I'm still, right now, as I'm talking right now, I'm on ISR. Mm-hmm. And it ain't nothing but a year program. And I got out in 17, but I keep nothing going back and back and back for violations. Six months here. Uh, a year here and shit like that, you know? Right now, this is the closest I've ever been to coming off ISR right now. Damn. And I say I got like, I got like probably, uh, I get off, I, I mean, I don't get off, but I get into phase three on the 18th of this month. That's just nothing but curfew. Now I ain't got a call dude to go here and there, you know, so I'm almost done with this shit. And that's why I be telling people like, this shit ain't what's up, man, because a lot of people left me down and out when I did them 10. Mm. Mm-hmm. I say the people that showed me love is when I when I got when I got to Kansas when I went to Kansas man the, the Kansas the, the Kansas the Kansas Crips and Blood showed me so much love. I shot out Kansas City on the Kansas City Kansas side. They showed me so much love out there, man, and really you know what I'm saying really got me through that shit. You know, so I shot them out all the time. The Hoovers, the neighborhood, the neighborhood Crips from Wichita, the Hoovers from Kansas. You know, I, I got a lot of love for them, man. Mm. All right. Well, shit. Let's let's talk a little bit about prison, man. Um, <clears throat> so we, let's rewind. You know, ten years ago, two thousand eight. Mm. What's it like for an active gang member to enter prison? Well, when you get in there, when you get in there, you know, you're gonna get some people that's gonna like. For me, when I got in there, my first time in there, I, you know, I was I was young. So they sent me to a, a medium camp, and it was like college. I'm like, this shit is nothing. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, I had, I had 12 months to do, did that, got out. You know, you do, you do eight months off of each year. So when I did that, I got back out. It was, you know, I'm like, that ain't shit. Caught another case, went back to another medium. Shit didn't get hard until motherfucker got to our, to the max joints. And it, and then still, it wasn't like that hard until I got out of town. Cause we was banging in the joints. We was banging in the joints down here. So they, they, they took 20 of us and, and split us all up. Mm. I ended up getting shot down to Kansas. When I got down there, I seen a whole nother way of, of prison, of a prison lifestyle. You know, I seen a whole nother way. Like we're not even really bidding in jail up here. Our jails, like it's real simple. You get, I'm talking about you get paid real good. The jails is clean. You know, you get good food as far as, far as jail shit. Man, you get down to Kansas, man, that shit is hard times, man. You got to really know how to hustle down there in them joints. I was in Hutch, and I was in Lansing, and I was in uh, El Dorado right next to the B2K killer. You know, that was my next door neighbor. And, and it, 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 down there, they're not faking, man. That, that crippling blood shit is for real. And I'm going to tell you, the, the Serenials and the Norpenials, mm-hmm. boy, they go the hardest to me mm-hmm. because they're not letting nobody – they're not letting nobody from the uh, like if it's a North Angel, he's not letting no he's not letting no surrender touch their compound and vice versa. So I'll be like, yeah, they they not faking. We'll we'll sit here and let a blood or a crip walk past us, and we won't even think nothing about it. They ain't playing. Mm. I'm like, and they work out like a well oiled machine. They some I, I seen that shit. I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. Like down here in, in L.A., they say they be funking with the Mexicans and shit. I don't, like up here. I didn't really never. Like, we don't really be around the Mexicans like that, you know? Mm. We got a lot of Somalians up here. Mm. We, got a, we got a whole bunch of Somalians, and they come from, like, California. The Somalians, I know, they come from San Diego, and they all Crips. Mm. We, they do everything we do. I'm telling you. Damn. But, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Who, and this is the best way to phrase to put it, but who, quote, runs the prisons over in that area? Who run the prisons? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I say, really, nobody runs our prisons. Like it, each person got a, they got the keys to the car. You got one person that might have the keys to the car. You know what I'm saying? And he's gonna like call shots or probably because down there they, they, you're make, they're making work out. You got to work out and you got to stay on point. And 
you just gotta be you just gotta be on your P's and Q's because the shit is so dangerous down there. You can lose your life and shit. So we're not we gotta when we working out, we gotta make sure we looking up, looking to see where our homies is. Like after every set, we looking up to count where our homies at on the yard. Because all the phones is out on the yard. So and at any time somebody can go out there and get hurt. You know, but it, it, it's real out there, man. It's real here. I hear it ain't really the jails here ain't really that hard, if you ask me. You know, so when I came back and told these, and told and, and told the homies about down there and about how the jail is down there, they they, they didn't believe me. I'm like, man, look, we got it easy up here. I ain't gonna lie, we got it real easy in Minnesota in the prison. Our streets is dangerous, but the prisons is easy. Mm. <laughs> I ain't lie. Ain't nobody dying, really. Ain't nobody getting stabbed. Ain't nobody getting hit in the head with lock. Ain't nothing. There's just a lot of going to sell and fight. You get down there in them other guns down there in Kansas or anywhere else, man, more getting fucked off. Like, you can't even, like, I couldn't even take a shower without, uh, 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 I had to take showers with my boots on in Kansas. You know? Damn. I had to get in there with a two-minute shower, one-minute shower and get the fuck up out of there because it's so dangerous. You can get killed back there. There ain't no cameras. Ain't no guards back there. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It was fucked up. I ain't gonna lie. So when you walk mm-hmm. in, you know, when you walk in the first day, are you looking mm-hmm. for, you know, fellow Crips? Or, you know, you, you, what's what's your mentality I, when, when you're walking in? How I did it, I shit, when I, how I did it is... I woke up one day and it was a month getting a violation, I guess, in the back. So when I heard the squeaking, that's what made me hurry up and jump up. Like, what the f-? And then I heard I heard my homie Mac Maul start saying, cuz this and cuz that. I, so I'm like, boy, you a crip? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, homie, I'm such and such from shotgun, this, 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 that, and the other. Here go my paperwork to show you I ain't hot. From there, he introduced me to a lot of the other homies from, the, from Hoover, you know what I'm saying? Because when I was down in Kansas, I had to go plug with the Hoovers because... You know, down there, the gun and the and the gun and the groove is together. I, I, and it ain't that many people. It ain't that many shotguns down there, so I had to go plug with the groove. But you know, I I, I introduce myself to me anywhere I go. I'm going to when I get a person to a joint. I'm asking where the Crips is because that's what I am. I'm not going to be playing. I'm not going to be faking because this is my life. So I, where's the Crips at? And then I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna introduce myself. Tell them where I'm from. Show them the paperwork, show them I ain't hot, and we're going to go from there, you know? If I got to put some work in, come on, let me go, because I know I'm going to have to put some work in down here, you know what I'm saying? Because people want to know if you really with the shit. So who, who who I need to go get down, with, go get at real quick, let me go and get this all out the way, and we go from there. You know, we go from there. You know? I love this crippling shit, but I don't. Mm. It's like a double-edged sword to this shit. Mm. It's a double-edged sword to it, man. And a lot of these young guys don't understand or know that they'll get out there, they'll join the gang, and, and then all of a sudden when the shit gets to hitting the fan, they looking crazy. Should have read that small print at the bottom. <laughs> this shit is serious, you know. Damn, that's serious. 